Hey, what's up? I'm Sam DeZeo with SmartDesign.Church, where we use the strong power of video to reach people for the even stronger name of Jesus. So I've seen a lot of people online asking for tutorials and trainings on how to do animation within After Effects. So I was curious. I went to some of those people I saw asking those questions, and I said, hey, what are, what are some of the things that you're seeing that you're like, hey, I want to learn how to make that. How is that made within After Effects. And I've got a couple suggestions and I want to start tackling those. So one of those suggestions was from Ryan Nearhood. He showed me this Church on the Move video and it's basically an intro video but it has some nice wipes and nice transitions between different b-roll and different uh, shots of their church. And at the end of the intro, which is actually what we're going to be looking at within After Effects, it kind of wipes away um, to reveal their logo and it's wiping in a way that's using their logo. So we're going to be looking at how to use masks and transitions transitions like that within After Effects. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So as you can see, we have this mask coming in from all the sides and it reveals to their logo. So what I have in here is a bunch of pictures and um, as you can see, we're using pictures instead of video. Um, that's mainly because I don't have any good video to use for this example and pictures just render faster, but um, the same techniques can be used for video as well, obviously. So what we're gonna do first is bring in our logo. So let's make a new comp and just call it um, logo mat and 1920 by 1080 and 24 frames a second is good um, we'll make it 10 seconds is fine um, in here I have two logos so I have the circle logo so that's the main logo that it reveals to at the end um, but I also have just the arrow logos so this is what we're going to use to make that mask coming in so we have one problem. This is an Illustrator file, so that's great because we can uh, make this really big and we're not gonna lose any quality. However, we don't really have much control over the animation of this since it's just an Illustrator file. But luckily, since it's an Illustrator file, we can turn these shapes into shapes that After Effects understands. So if we right click this layer and go to Create, Create Shapes from Vector Layer, and click that, now we have two layers. We have the normal um, Illustrator one, but you can see that now that's automatically turned off. But we also have the shapes layer, the shapes layer that After Effects actually understands. And we can actually change the color of this um, because it is actually shapes layers within After Effects. So really we can get rid of the Illustrator file. Just hit delete. Really, we're going to be getting rid of this layer as well, um, because what we're going to do is we're going to make these these paths expand. However, you can't really do that within shape layers. We can only do that with masks. And if you don't know what I'm saying, um, you'll see here in a second. <clears throat> but the techniques that we're going to try to do um, with that expansion thing, we can't do with shape layers. So let me show you. So let's go to Layer, New, Solid, and this solid can be any color. Um, so we'll make it this green color and make it the comp size. We want it to be the full size and hit OK. OK, so now we have the, just this green solid. So we want to copy the, um, the path of this shape and bring it to a mask of the, um, the solid. So first, we just want to make any sort of mask on this solid. So it can be anything. So let's just go up to our ellipse tool and just make a quick mask. Really, it can be literally anything. So then we want to go to our um, shapes here and open that up, open up contents, and now we see group one and group two. So that's both of our shapes. So let's open up group one and then open up path. So now we see this path right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that. So I'm going to do Command C or Control C if you're on a PC. So copy that. And now I'll go down to my lime green solid here with the mask and hit um, M on my keyboard. So that's going to open up my mask. And now we see mask path. So we just copied the path from our shape layer. And let's paste the path onto our um, mask layer. So I'll do Command V or Control V if you're on a PC. And now we can see that the mask is applied to this lime green solid. So it actually moved itself over here. That's not the right place, but let's just drag that into place and put it about right here. So you can see it's a little bit smaller. The reason for that is that's actually the right size. But if we go up to our shape layer here and hit S, um, this is actually at 110% scale, but if we scaled this down to 100, we can see now they're exactly the same size. So that's not really a big deal that they're different sizes, but that would be why that's the case. So I'll just put that in place. All right, now really we can get rid of 
um, our shape layers. Just get rid of that. Um, and now we can just duplicate this one. But you know what? I made a mistake. Let's go back and just undo that to get uh, bring this one back. That way we can duplicate this layer. I'm going to do Command D, or you can go to Edit and Duplicate. And now let's just uh, double click on the mask and move the mask over here. And I'm holding it down shift so it moves just on the X axis. All right, so now that we have both of our lime green uh, solid layers, we can get rid of the actual shape. So why did I just do that? Why did I recreate that? So because with masks, we can actually do that expansion thing where with shapes we can't. So if I open up our mask properties, you can do MM on your keyboard, select the layer, and hit MM and it'll open that up. Now we see these options. So if I crank up the expansion, we can see what happens. It expands that mask path. So we couldn't do that with shape layers, so that's why we had to go through this whole technique. So if I bring that down to zero, that's what we want it to end at. So let's drag to about four seconds, and let's set a keyframe. So that's where we want it to end at. And let's drag to about uh, the two and a half second mark, and crank that up so the edges are covering at least the right half of the frame. So that this is what I'm looking at. At least all of this needs to be green. Okay, so that's good. And then let's select both of these keyframes and hit F9 on your keyboard. So that's gonna make these easy ease. So it's just gonna give it a more fluid movement, a little bit less robotic. And I actually like to make this a little bit more fluid. So with these both these keyframes selected, I'm going to go up to my graph editor and pull the Bezier um, handles out just a little bit. So now this is our animation. All right, there we go. So now I just want to copy these properties over to our other green layer. So let's copy these and I'm going to go to uh, the position of the first keyframe by hitting this arrow a couple times. All right, now that we're there. So I'll go to my other layer, hit MM on the keyboard, hit my mask expansion, and then paste that by just doing Command V or by going to edit paste. Now, um, both of these have the same properties applied. So at the beginning, all of this is green, and then it shrinks down. There we go. So now we just wanna animate these to go off screen. So before it gets all the way um, to its original position or the original scale, I'm going to set a keyframe for my position. So with both of these layers selected, I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard and set a keyframe by hitting the stopwatch and then go a couple seconds in time and drag these all the way to the side. And again, I'm holding shift so it only moves on the X axis or I can just move it on the Y axis, but I want to keep it on the X axis, so I'll hold shift. All right, so this is what we got kind of ugly so far, but um, we're going to touch it up. So let's select all these keyframes and hit F9 again for easy ease. Um, that just gives it a little bit more fluid movement and less um, just, you know, stop and go. It kind of slows down um, to a stop or it starts to slowly speed up. And then we're going to go to our graph editor. Now, again, like we did before, we want to pull out these Bezier handles. But one thing I don't like in After Effects is with position, unless you separate the X and Y, um, you can't do that with the uh, Bezier, or, or Bezier, however you say that, handles. So all you have to do is go over to your position, right click, and say separate dimensions. So that's going to separate your X and the Y. Now, for us, we're not moving it on the X, or the Y position at all. So really, I'm just going to um, get rid of the keyframes on both the Y positions, because we don't need it. It's just keyframes that are getting in the way. So I'm going to select both of these X positions by hitting one and hitting command or control to hit the other. And now I'll select this keyframe. And really you're selecting two keyframes. You're selecting the keyframe on both of these. And I'm gonna pull this handle out straight out. And then I'm gonna do that same thing for this one. So we kind of get an S shape right here on the graph. So we'll go out of the graph editor. So this is what we got. There we go. All right, so that's probably the most difficult, um, time-consuming part of this whole thing, other than you know editing your entire video together. But for the sake of this final animation thing, that's the most difficult part. So now let's make a final composition. So let's hit our new composition button and say final, and 1920 by 1080, 24 frames a second. That's good. 
Okay, so now let's drag in our logo mat. So this is the animation that we have. Okay, so let's just drag in a picture. So we'll drag that under the picture. So um, first of all, let's hide this logo mat here for a second. And I'm going to scale this guy up all the way. Um, if you have a 16 by 9 video, you might not have to do that, but since um, we had some black bars on the sides, I just want to make sure this is covering the whole frame. So now I will um, show this layer again, our logo mat layer, and on our photo, or in your case it might be video, um, under the track mat, I'm going to go um, alpha mat logo mat. So what that's doing is it's taking wherever um, there is something in this above comp, it's going to um, kind of mask out the photo that's under it. So if we turn this back on, you can see that it's masking it out. Now if you don't see the track mat option, um, you can either toggle the switches and modes, and that might make it show up, or you can go down here and toggle these guys on and off until you see it. All right, so, so far, this is what we have. All right, so far, so good. So. Now I'm going to just bring in our final logo. So that's the circle one, and I'm gonna drag that under it. So really what this is doing is kind of revealing to that logo. So once it gets smaller, we see the logo. So I'll scale this down a little bit. So I'm gonna grab these handles and hold shift. So that scales it down to the point where I want it. And then I'm gonna give it just a slight scale over time. So let's see when we start to see it here. So probably about there. Okay, so then let's uh, hit S on our keyboard and set a keyframe and move forward in time to about there-ish and just scale it up just a hair. All right, there we go. So what we wanna do now is put something in the background. We want some videos in the background that kind of wipe off at the end. So I'm going to, let's grab a, any one of these, so let's grab that one. As long as it's a little bit different from the foreground, I'll scale that up. Okay, so now I want to animate kind of a wipe off, so what we end up with is this logo on black. So in our example, um, this kind of wiped off with a circular mask kind of thing. So what we're really gonna do is um, the same mask style technique that we did with the logo. So instead of using an actual logo or something fancy like this, we're just going to use a wide oval or wide circle. So I'm going to make sure none of my layers are selected, go up to the ellipse tool. If you don't see the ellipse tool, just hold down right here and go to the ellipse tool. And we're just gonna make a wide oval, something like this. And we want it to um, cover the entire frame. So I'm gonna move it into place and it's not covering the whole frame. So let's double click it and scale it up. Okay, so we got it covering the whole frame and then let's animate this guy off. So I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard with that selected. Set a keyframe for the position, move forward a little bit and just bring this guy down. We might need to animate um, how fast that happens. We'll see. All right, so I'm going to bring this over our photo 2 layer, which is our background layer here. And um, my track mat isn't showing, so I'll toggle my switches and modes. And then go to track mat, alpha mat, shape layer 1. And we can rename that too. All right, so now we can see that it's wiping off to black. Now if yours is wiping off to something like a checkerboard like this, just hit this button right here, toggle transparency grid. Really what that's doing is it's just... Um, setting either a black or just showing you that there is transparency there. All right, so we're almost done. So this is the animation that we have. So what I'm noticing now is the wipe off comes in a little late. So all we have to do is select these keyframes and um, just kind of adjust the timing of when this comes off. So let's see, right about here we want it to start wiping off. So I'll move these keyframes to about here so the animation starts there. Okay. Yeah, that's about what we're looking for. And you know what, I'm going to have these selected and hit F9 for easy ease again. 
All right, and there we go. And that is how we do this simple church on the move animation. Thank you to Ryan Nearhood for suggesting this. Um, this was kind of a fun one to just experiment with and try out. All right, so that's pretty much it. Thank you, Ryan, for your suggestion. Um, I hope you learned something from this, and I hope other people did as well. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment, like, comment, and subscribe, whatever you need to do to get a hold of me. But you can also go to smartdesign.church, where our goal there is to use the power of video to reach people for Jesus. So we've got tutorials and trainings and case studies and the whole shebang there. So if you have any other questions about video, go ahead there first. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.